Is Well Tower a buy or a sell? Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 83 billion market cap. They're trading at 133 a share and they have 620 million shares outstanding. Well Tower is a REIT with 3,000 properties in the US and the UK. It has senior housing, outpatient medical properties, post-acute, skilled nursing, and assisted living facilities. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Free cash flow looks really good. It goes up each year from 1.3 billion to 2 billion. Nice margins, 27%. That means they convert 27% of their revenue into free cash flow. I think above 20% is a good goal for most companies. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That jumped a lot from 2023 to the trailing 12 months over 900 million. Margins 12%, which is okay. Revenue is a sales for the company and that goes up each year from 4.7 billion to 7.4 billion. Most REITs pay a dividend. Theirs is 2%, which is on the lower side for a REIT but they can only cover that 1.2 times with their free cash flow. So I guess that's all they can afford. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 65 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $55 billion. We divide that by 620 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $88. They're trading at 133, so they're trading at a 51% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Do you think it's a buy or sell? Let me know in the comments. There are 17 companies in the same industry as well, and if they have a number in red, they're worse than the median. If they have a number in blue, they're better. They spend the most in CapEx. These are the investments of property, plant, and equipment, 1.5 billion. Their debt to equity ratio looks pretty good at 0.5. For every dollar of equity, they have 50 cents of debt. The average is one. Care Trust has the lowest debt to equity ratio, 0.2. They pay a low dividend for this industry, 1.9%. Medical Properties Trust is 13%. They've been paying a high dividend for a while because the stock price came down so much. Wells Free Cash Flow is the highest at over 2 billion. They're the biggest company by far in this industry, 80 billion. But all their price multiples are worse than the median, which does imply they're overvalued. They generate the most revenue, 7.4 billion. And it looks like they're still growing. Their five year annual revenue growth rate is 8%. Global Medical REIT is 18%. That's the highest. If you put $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd be pretty happy at $28,000 today an 11% annual return, a 179% total return. To summarize, I have them trading at a 51% premium, ranking three out of 10 because I seem overvalued. Would I buy them? I do like the business, five out of 10. Ratios look pretty weak, two out of 10, but their financials look really good. Free cash flow up 60% since 2021, revenue up 56%. They just released their third quarter 10Q. Let's take a look at it. We'll start with the income statement. This shows us third quarter 24, third quarter 23, the first three quarters of 24 and the first three quarters of 23. Revenue went from 1.7 billion to a little under 2.1 billion. They break down their revenue into four categories, resident fee and services. That went from 1.2 billion to 1.5 billion, a nice growth. Rental income, 384 million to 430 million. Interest income, they earn interest because they give out loans. 42 million to 69 million and other is also up. So everything is up. Let's see if they give a different breakdown of the revenue. Here's a different breakdown of the 2.1 billion. 1.5 billion is in seniors, housing, operating. 300 million in triple net. Triple net is taxes, insurance, and maintenance. Sometimes a tenant is just charged rent. Say they pay 5,000 a month for rent. Other tenants are charged triple net. So they may pay 4,000 for rent, 1,000 for triple net. Outpatient medical, 200 million. They break down these categories into resident fees and services, rental income, interest income, and other income. 85% of their revenue is in the US, 8% in UK, and 7% in Canada. Their percent in the US is going up while their percent in the UK and Canada is going down. That could be due to foreign currency conversion or they're just making more money in the US than the UK and Canada or a combination of both. Let's go back to the income statement. We'll look at their expenses. 
Operating expenses, 1.2 billion. Depreciation, they have lots of fixed assets, 400 million. Interest expense, they have a lot of debt, 139 million. General and administrative expenses, 78 million. GNA is all expenses not tied to making a product or service. So an example is the payroll for HR, the payroll for marketing. They had an impairment of 23 million, so total expenses 1.9 billion. Operating income 184 million, more than doubled from last year. They had a gain on the sale of real estate, so that gives them net income of 456 million. And they're adding a lot of shares. That's what you don't want to see. It went from 522 million to 611 million. Let's look at their balance sheet. Total assets 49 billion. Most of that is the real estate. Land and land improvements 5 billion. Buildings 41 billion. Then you have to minus depreciation 10 billion. So the net value of the property is 39 billion. They also provide loans. So loans receivables is 1.8 billion. So the real estate assets 42 billion. They have 3.5 billion of cash. 1.7 billion of investments. I wonder what the investments are. They talk about it right here. They participate in a lot of joint ventures. So they may buy senior centers with other companies. The joint ventures for senior housing operations are 1.4 billion. They own between 10 and 95% of those joint ventures. Triple net is 111 million, outpatient medical 246 million. They have 18 billion of liabilities, 13 billion of unsecured debt, two and a half billion of secured debt. Secured means the debt is backed by something like real estate. Unsecured debt means it's not backed by anything. Credit card debt is unsecured debt. A mortgage loan is secured debt. Assets minus liabilities equals equity, 30 billion of equity. They raised 37 billion from selling their business and they profited 10 billion from running their business. They paid out a lot of dividends, 18 billion of dividend payments. Let's look at the statement of cash flows. This is for the trailing nine months. So operating cash flow 1.7 billion. It was 1.2 billion last year. The way you calculate operating cash flow, you start with your net income, then you add back non-cash items like depreciation. They have a lot of depreciation, 1.2 billion. In their investing section, they had a cash outflow of 3.3 billion. 1.7 billion acquisitions, 500 million of capital improvements on the existing properties, and 630 million of construction. So they have a lot going on in the investing section. In the financing section, they also have a lot going on. They added 1 billion of debt. They paid down 1.3 billion of debt. They issued 5.3 billion of common stock. This is probably for an acquisition. And they paid 1.1 billion of dividends. Let's look at a stock on Simply Wall Street. It's last price, 133, 84 billion market cap. Up 2.5% in the past week. Up a solid 50% in the past year. So it looks like the stock started trading in 1990, around $15 a share. Within a few months of trading, it got to its all-time low but it never got that low again. So if you bought this stock all the way back at IPO, you're probably doing amazing. It did have a nice run up through 1998, 1999, but then came down in 2000, 2001, probably from a dot-com crash. It went from 17 in 2000 to 50 in 2008. Then the Great Recession came, it fell to below 30, and that was in 2008. It had a really nice run up to 2019 to 87. Then the COVID crash fell below 50. But really ever since March 2020, the stock has done amazing. The stock did slide in the second half of 2022, but came right back up past its all time highs. And it keeps breaking records. Currently the stock is really high. So it does appear overvalued. Simply Wall Street says they're overvalued, which is pretty rare. They say the stock is 128, it's trading at 133. 19 analysts priced this stock at 132. So everybody says it's overvalued. Their revenue back in 2013 was 2.9 billion, and it had a nice steady climb up to 5 billion by 2019. It did come down to a little over 4 billion in 2021, but ever since then, it's gone up like a rocket ship. Look at this, year after year, they keep breaking records. 7.5 billion currently. Here's their debt since 2013, it was 10.5 billion. Now it's pretty much at its all time high at 15 billion. But you have to look at the equity to get the full picture. Their equity is always higher than their debt. And the spread is widening, which is what you want to see if you own the stock. Their equity is half their debt. And if you look at their cash, they do have a good amount of cash, 3.5 billion. Plenty of cash to service the debt. Their next dividend is on 11.20. So you want to own the stock before 11.12 to get the 11.20 dividend. 
Here's the yield since 2014, it was 4%. It got up to almost 7% in the beginning of 2020. That's when the stock came down. But the yield has been coming down. It's at 2% now. The forecast is 2.3% by 2026. And they've been lowering their dividend. In February 2020, their dividend was 87 cents. That's a quarterly dividend. The next quarter, 61 cents. And they kept it at 61 cents for a long time. Until this most recent dividend, they raised it to 67 cents. The CEO salary went from 400,000 to 1.2 million. That's quite a raise. Total compensation, 17 million tenure CEO, four years. Only one insider activity in the past year, a sell by Kenneth Bacon, Kevin Bacon's brother, 1,800 shares. 96% of the company is owned by institutions, 4% by the general public. If you own the stock, chances are an institution holds the stock for you. Like if you own the stock through Vanguard, it shows up in institutions. You're not an institution, but Vanguard is. And that's their biggest shareholder, Vanguard at 15%, BlackRock at 10%. Cohen and Steers, a New York City investment firm, owns 6%. The LA firm, Capital Research, owns 6%. State Street, the Boston firm, owns 6%. The Norwegian bank, Norgus, owns 5.3%. The giant bank, JP Morgan, owns 1.6%. The Austin, Texas investment fund, Dimensional, owns 1.25%. Center Square is a real estate investment manager located in Pennsylvania. They own 0.68%. REITs don't have many employees. It went from 400, now it's currently 533. And the ticker trades on the New York Stock Exchange, Deutsche Börse, London Stock Exchange, Mexican Bolsa, and Sao Paulo Bolsa. So if you want to learn how to pick apart financial statements, the income statement, the balance sheet, and statement of cash flows, how to understand the current ratio, how to understand debt to equity, just click on this video in the top right corner. Thanks for watching.